Hallo! Hallo! Oh, you in, you in on that one. <laughs> well, welcome to episode 215. And you might be able to tell from the background. Yep. Back oh, hold on, I'll bring me belly in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, breathing a bit more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're back at Aspen Lakes. 48 hours ahead of us. And as you can see, you might recognise Darren from such episodes as uh, Welford Pools. The only episode. Of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're fishing together on a social. Uh, not fishing yet, only just rocked up. We've both had work, so it is kind of late after, well, early evening now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've let Darren have the good swim again. Thanks, mate. The, the bench swim. And I, I'm... Did, I did let him have a choice. <laughs> but I'm in the swim just to the left, which is literally only two rod lengths away. So we are nice and social, but still keep one metre socially distanced. <laughs> right guys, anyway, as I said, it is early evening, so we do need to crack on and get kit sorted out. So, let's go fishing. I'm going to walk away this time. Alright guys, so first thing I'm going to do is um, prepare my bait for this session. Uh, I've already put three kilos in my bucket, but finally hinders have sort of caught up with all their back orders and uh, deliveries and they're finally rolling the uh, the seafood bait out now so I, I know it says fish bait it's just a temporary bait until they've actually got their uh, proper labels for the seafood printed but um, we've already got three kilos in there guys so let's, let's put a fourth kilo in there not saying I'm going to use four kilos, it's just what I'm going to prepare. So. Right, because it's only literally just coming out now guys. No label, but it's a seafood bait glug. So let's get all that. Over there. And then what I'm going to do as well, guys, just to give it a bit of an extra bit of a pep, I'm going to mix in some uh, hemp oil, the good oil. So I'm going to do. I'm just going to take that pot that had the that had the food glug in it, and just just half fill it. Just, Give it a little bit of a shake just to get all the last little bits of the food glug out of that bottle. And this is going to be the smelly bit. Oh, let's get in there with me hands and get all them liquids fully covered over them boilies and get them all nice and... Trust me guys, if you had smell of vision you'd be able to smell this because it is a proper, proper stinky smelly bait right. and there we go guys four kilos of bait nicely glugged in the matching food bait and uh, probably I reckon about 200 mils of hemp oil just to give it a nice little slick also guys, um, from me leftovers from me digger, digger lake session last week, I've got about a, a kilo, kilo and a half of pellets left over from what I bought at digger lakes. So um, I'll probably use them as well, get them used up, so I'll probably do a bit of a boily pellet combo when I bait up. So. You know, there's not many left, so I might as well just use them and get them used up, I think. Right, guys, I'm slowly getting there. I've got my rig sorted. So, we have got a fluorocarbon D rig. 
scrawny rig. And then a uh, basic knotless knot rig with a snowman set up on. I thought I'd have a go at fishing all different uh, rigs for this session. Uh, the snowman rig. It is a snowman rig in there, but um, I've just wrapped a bit of a paste around that rig, around the hook and around the bottom bait part of the hook before it goes out. A bit old school, the old paste, but when I went in Indus this week to go and pick up my supply of seafood uh, boilies, they'd give me some, uh, some hook baits, some seafood beetle in, some of the glug which we've already seen, and then a tub of paste. And I haven't used paste for years, so uh, but well, I've got it. Let's have a, let's have a go using it. So that's why I'm kind of doing the snowman rig, just because I can use the old paste on that rig. So a uh, bit old school, but you know, let's give it a go. I've never used paste here before, so something new to try. Right, got to get the rods up the bag now. Right, so that's it then guys, we are now fishing. So we didn't, I didn't film all three rods going out because basically the right hand rod kind of basically did the same as the middle rod, went up to about a rod length off the island but they're probably fishing four red le rod lengths apart I reckon. And then uh, as we've seen left hand rod is just just to the margins and because I'm not using the boat for that one just a little scoop of bait went over that one by hand might just be able to see in the background how oh, Darren's just getting his first rod out up the channel right now the rods are out I've got to get the house up now. One metre away. <laughs> right guys, so we're having a little look seeing Darren swim. Now you've seen me fish this swim in several of my blogs, but um, we didn't see Darren's rods go out because it was about the time my rods were going out and you know, it's my blog, so my rods are more important. So of course. Yeah, but mine catch more fish. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do actually, yeah. No, yeah, they usually do here, but that's, you know, we'll see. But anyway, so, now Darren's fishing this swim and not me. Darren's going to just say where he's fishing as opposed to where I normally fish. Right. Or not necessarily opposed, it could be the same spots. Well, they probably are. <laughs> I've got one out, I don't know if you can see it, on the, the point just where it comes round on the corner. There's like a stick in the ground. I've got one rod about probably a rod length off. I've put one in the channel, but I've kept to the left hand side because obviously if someone comes to the swim next door, they got the right hand side. Probably mid channel up, midway up. And then I've put one 
literally right in the margins, <laughs> just there, um, where, where it shallows up to sort of five foot. Shallows up to five yeah. foot. <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for I say, as Where's opposed, five foot deep? <laughs> yeah, for what I say, as opposed to the spots I normally fish, that is the spots I fish is as it? well. Is it? So if see the great minds think alike, or no, it's because you told me earlier. Oh right. No, N. <laughs> no, just you look at the swim, but, and it's the but, sort but of no, it is the spots everyone. It is the spots everyone normally um, fishes in this swim. To be fair, isn't it? So, so they are pretty much the same spots I fish, and to be fair, so. I mean, but when you look at this swim, they are kind of the going sp spots that you would fish. To be fair, yeah, I mean, it does. This swim, this swim is very fishy, isn't it? It looks. Oh, I, f know. I thought that. I thought it was you. No, oh, that's fishy. I thought it was my phone going. No, <laughs> no it does. Uh, well, well, I'm surprised you let me have this one because this is your one of your favourites, isn't it? Well, you know me. I'm. Good yeah, luck that you're a gentleman, I, I always so think of other people. Thanks, mate. Always think of the less fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a chance, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, got so when Darren does redo his rods tomorrow now, probably then yeah. Yeah, then, then we'll have a look. But yeah, it is pretty much the same spot, and they are the the hot spots really of this swim. Yeah. So. Well, we'll let know later, won't we? Hopefully. Yeah. Go from there. And of course, Chris has got the best swim on the lake. <laughs> a swim I've never fished before. No, it's a good swim. Right. You catch a lot of fish. Right, anyway, guys, I'm in the middle of cooking my dinner, so we'll leave it there. As you can see, we are losing the light, so um, hopefully we shall see you in the night with a fishy. Hopefully. Oh, good morning, guys. And... A quiet night it was for me. Uh, had a couple of bleeps on my middle rod. But yeah, unfortunately, no action for me. Darren had a screaming run in the night and lifted into nothing. And, and then lost the tension of the net as well. But, uh, redoing one of his rods now so just watching his boat go out there you go that is here's a man who can multitask he can hold his rod and drive his bait boat at the same time or one handed look oh. Before, actually three things because I'm reading my thing as well oh yeah well, are you good at one handed activities I certainly am they call me Popeye <laughs> Right then guys, the rod father, aka Darren, is just redoing his rods, so while he's got a rig in his hand, he's going to tell us about it, aren't you mate? Yeah, it looks that way. Yeah, um, yeah you got, didn't know until about two seconds no. ago. <laughs> <laughs> i got a three ounce grip of lead on a lead clip, um, about six, seven inch hook length and Obviously the favourite bait, what I always use, two artificial maize and one wheel of maize just popped up off the bottom, like that. And that's what I've been catching on one down here. I don't know if you can see that with my chunky fingers. Hang on, hold it still. We, we, we saw a very similar rig when we was at Welford Pool. Yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. It's all I use. I've actually got all three rods out on particle. I'm not bothering putting any out on boily. I'm going to do a particle approach this weekend and then just dropping it in the boat dropping it out and um, see what happens that's yeah, my secrets away now aren't yeah. you? what I use how I catch them lovely jovely look, look at that carty mix guys 
This is pretty much the mix you use everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, everywhere, without fail. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. <laughs> yeah, what's in your mix? Um, we got pigeon conditioner, goat mix, hemp, and obviously maize. All soaked and then boiled up, as you see the other night. Duck chaser. <laughs> oh, found your mark. Yeah. And actually, on the camera, I can see some fizzing just beyond the boat. So I got me four out there. How much further out is it? Uh, keep going up. I don't have too much more, but... Oh. And about there. There was some fizzing about just there. Let's come back a little bit, because it goes off to four foot there. Four point four, point four foot, that'll do. Guys, the old weather's taken a bit of a turn for the worse. It's uh, a bit moist out, shall we say? But it was forecast. We knew it was coming. But uh, yeah, maybe these uh, conditions might switch the fish on. Uh, just an update on my rods, I haven't touched them since they first went out last night. I'll be going to uh, the chip shop later on, in a, or probably only in a few hours time, so uh, the rods can stay out until it's time to wind them in to go up to the old fish and chippy. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit damp out, so uh, you know. I'll try not to catch the fish in this weather because I don't want them, I don't want them to get wet. <laughs> I don't know about you mate, but I've got a fish. And me. Yeah. It's a cod. Bugger me. So is mine. Well. And I've got a nice I'll, flap I'll, as well. I won't bug you if that's okay. <laughs> Lovely jubbly, look at that. Oh. This guy's uh, done me normal. Saturday night run to the old South Cerny fish and chips. Mmm. 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 Very good. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's the one. Mm. Oh. Cheers. Dilly dilly, guys. Dilly dilly. Cloudy. Rosy. Mmm. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's a weird stuff, spider. Isn't it? <laughs> mm. Right guys, uh, it's just gone eight o'clock in the evening now and uh, just getting the rigs rebated, ready to go out for tonight's part of the fishing session. Hopefully that cod I've just had won't be the only fish of this session. But, uh, I'm going to make one small change, not to the rigs or anything. The rigs are the same, but um, when I wound in the uh, rods to go up the chippy, me margin rod that you see me just do the underarm plop just round to the side. Um, it it come in all right for about half a rod length, and then it um 
snagged up on something. So I don't know what's down there, but there's clearly a snag down there. So I don't want to get snagged up on whatever it is that's down there again. So basically I'm going to abandon that spot and then put all three rods out with a bait boat out into the lake somewhere. So, so I'll probably still fish kind of the far margin on the two spots that I was fishing anyway because I've got me markers of where I was fishing. I mean, there's a nice white stick on the far bank to act as one marker, so that's quite helpful to have that in place. So I'll probably just fish the rod that was fishing the margins. Um, somewhere probably mid-water, to be fair. I'm, I'm not going to film all the rods going out this time round because it is gone 8 o'clock now and I don't want to be fannying around basically trying to film when oh, I, you know I need to get the rods out so you just have to trust me on what I'm saying that <laughs> where the rods are going so the rig that got lost by the way that got caught up on that snag and then snapped off was the was the rod that I was fishing on like the snowman rig so uh when I had to rig up that rod, I just kind of picked up the next rig that I was ready to go in my tackle box, back, so it's with another IQ D or fluorocarbon D rig. So, right, anyway, I'm going to crack on with this guys, stop me waffling and then get fishing again. Right, so that's it then guys. We are now fishing again. So, as I said, I've ignored that margin spot behind me now after I got snagged up in it. So, right hand rod is on its normal, was on the same spot. Left out this the left hand rod is now the spot that I was fishing on, the middle rod up towards that white stick. And the middle rod, as I said when I was doing my rigs, I've just pretty much just gone straight out in front to mid water. So, that's it, we're fishing again. Fingers crossed we can get some action tonight. Good morning guys. Only just morning, just, just literally gone one o'clock in the morning. Fish in a sling. Uh, unfortunately, not the carp. I was hoping for. A nice little tench. I haven't, I haven't weighed it, but I guess. Maybe about four pound male tench, as you can probably tell. But yeah, absolutely give me an absolutely screaming one toner. <laughs> give me a good little fight. I did think I was into a carp to begin with. But uh, yeah, quickly become apparent that after a, f after a few seconds it wasn't a carp. But yeah, the... the run it gave me was a absolute screaming one toner, which is a bit that made me think it was a carp, so, right, let's get it back, <laughs> get the rod back out. And guys, so uh, just a little, you know, update to say good morning, uh, so we're not blanking now, obviously we had that tench last night. When I say we, I mean I. But yeah, it's been a bit quiet up to now. Um, 
Darren had plenty of fish boshing out in his swim up the channel last night, so I can't explain why he hasn't caught. He should have done. <laughs> but, oh, um. I had this strange person kept visiting my bivvy, half naked, putting me off. I haven't got a clue what you're on about. But, um. But yeah, that, since I had that tension last night, obviously that rod went back out with the bait boat. Not sure exactly if it went to the mark where I was fishing, but it was there or thereabouts, because uh, even with my head torch on and the bait boat lights on, I still couldn't quite tell if I was on my mark. But, you know, it went back out and it's fishing, and even if it didn't exactly go on the mark, then it went out with another bait load of... of uh, a boatload of bait to, um, you know, get the rod back out. I did put a fresh hook bait on after I had that tench, so, but none of the other two rods that haven't done anything yet, they haven't been touched. There's no need to, I feel like I, I put enough bait out when they went out to, you know, keep the spots rocking, but, um, and fish have definitely moved over my spots, because when I, uh, started this session as you saw I put some glug and oil over my boilies and uh, you know periodically you see the odd flat spots come up in the lake so um, you know fish have at least been visiting your area whether they stop for a bite or not who knows you never know unless you go and wait there with scuba diving gear but uh, but there are definitely fish moving through the area so you know, you're just waiting for them to, one of them to at least kind of stop and drop. So, uh, but we're kind of coming up to midday on Sunday now. Um, I'm going to give it a few more hours fishing. I'm going to pack up sometime roughly three, four o'clock. And, you know, just kind of wait it out. If, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Like I say, it's not been a complete blank with that tench, but, uh, I mean, as we've seen in the last blog at Digger Lakes, it's not over until the rods come in, and sometimes it can happen literally right at the end of the session. Right then guys, we are coming to the end of the session now. As you can probably see just down here, the rods are still out, but when I finish filming this bit, I am going to start packing up. I wanted a tench this session and I and I caught one, so for me it has been a successful session. I didn't want to catch nothing this session because I was too busy talking to him, so it's yeah. been a very successful session it's for me too. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, I'll let I'll let you have the good swim, and you've completely you wasted it. it. Yeah, yeah well, I didn't want to show it up too much, mate. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Bit of a shorter video than normal. Ah, uh, by chance, Darren here has also started blogging, haven't you, mate? Yeah, it's his fault. So by the time I'm this, not as good as him yet, though. By the time this video goes out, you'll have you'll have had three videos out. I think yeah, I would have yeah. Yeah, yep. so I'll put a link in the video description under here, guys, to Darren's channel. That'd be great, thank you. The Fishing Nut 73. That's it, yep. That 73 means stone. <laughs> That's not a good day. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'm not sure where I'm going to be yet. I haven't totally made up my mind. But in two weeks' time, I have got the um, annual YouTube Blogger Social coming up so uh, look out for that one guys coming up in a couple of weeks time after this video goes out of course so we're at Tobber Manor we've got an exclusive booking of Big A's Lake for that one so that should be fun I won't be but there not high enough up in nah. the bloggers nah. I'm still pond life yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right anyway guys so thanks for watching until next time 
Tight lines. Tight lines.